uh, when we were watching NBA games get suspended and hearing about Tom Hanks being infected, I don't think I could have imagined the level of coordinated policy coming from the Treasury and Fed. And I even further don't think I could have predicted the behavior of millions of households, which was to pay down credit card debt and add to their savings as much as they went to online you know, shopping sites. So we've just seen this explosion in household wealth and an explosion in the amount of available cash that's out there in the system. And a lot of this by design. And the stock market has absolutely garnered, some would say, more than its fair share of that available cash. And the result is what you see on your screens all day. There were some certainly dark days um, and nights. We remember it well. What's the investing lesson in what we've endured over the last year, do you think? Well, I think the investing lesson is that very often the reaction of markets will be counterintuitive and can only be explained in hindsight. So I just told you a very good story about uh, why the Dow has been able to recover and the NASDAQ and uh, all sorts of other assets from commodities to cryptocurrencies. That story only makes sense now with the benefit of looking at the whole trajectory of events leading up to it. If I had told you this story uh, in March or April of last year, it would have been harder for you to accept. And now, of course, we all say, yeah, that's, that's pretty much what happened. So it's very important to understand that there is a huge range of things that could happen, even as the result of a crisis. And you can go back to any crisis in history and find things that at the time would have seemed hard to believe would take place that, in fact, did end up taking place. And this is just the latest example in a whole litany uh, of those types of outcomes. So being open-minded as an investor and understanding the human spirit and the determination on the part of investors to find ways to make money is a very big uh, tool in your kit. Uh, and it's, it becomes very helpful in the darkest days to recognize that people are going to find a way to invest and make money uh, based on almost any occurrence. The, the hard part is, is now what? Right. And you are as optimistic as anybody I've heard come on this network about a coming boom and all of the pent up demand that is ready to roar uh, as more people get vaccinated. Well, planet Earth lost a big chunk of its population 100 years ago during the uh, during the Spanish flu pandemic, which is really the closest thing we have to as an analog to what we've just lived through. And the roaring 20s followed soon after. And of course, as many similarities as there, as there are between then and now, there are just as many differences. So it's tough to say, yes, this will be the roaring 2020s um, and, and just have people say, yeah, that makes sense. That'll happen. There are, of course, headwinds here as well. Um, but I do think it's important to just look back on that and say in, in the winter of, 20, uh, of, uh, uh, of 1919, probably would have been very tough to picture the next decade being a booming decade. One thing that's really important to point out, Scott, um, you know, we, we've got the, the, the Depression babies, and everybody's familiar with this idea that people who grew up in the wake of uh, the crash of 1929, they were very frugal, and they were very fearful of uh, financial markets, and they were very worried about spending, and they never spent money on themselves. We now have the opposite situation. The big takeaway from the pandemic recession, some would call crash, um, is, is not that we should be fearful and frugal. Everyone went the other way. This was the recession where everyone bought a boat. And it's really unprecedented in American history to have us emerge from a recession with household balance sheets in the shape they're in now, which is phenomenal. One of the main reasons that we've seen a huge rally in bank stocks, for example, is the fact that there just wasn't this cleanup required. You didn't have this massive wave of losses occurring across the whole economy. You didn't have the mass bankruptcies at, 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 in corporations. You didn't have personal bankruptcies and foreclosures. You had the opposite. You had a housing boom. So I can't tell you definitively what the result of this will be because we've just never seen it before. And I think being honest about that and having some humility about how uncharted this all is is going to be really important as well.